All right, so this is the last part of chapter 12, and we're going to look at um, some particular types of coordinate systems. Um, we're going to look at cylindrical com uh, components or cylindrical coordinates, and you probably are familiar with those if we write them as r and then theta and z. And um, along the way, we're going to actually focus first on r and theta, which you might recognize as polar coordinates. And then if we add the third dimension, a z, it makes it cylindrical. So here's a little picture showing a situation where we might want to use cylindrical coordinates. Here's another one where we might have um, an object moving in a cylindrical shape, and so that because it's going in a helix, it's going to change its angle. It's all going to also going to change its vertical coordinate, which is z. Um, in this particular situation, of course, it wouldn't really change its radius, but that's a possibility as well. So um, it makes sense. It's easier if we sort of break this down piece by piece, and we start off with um, polar coordinates. And in polar coordinates, you might remember from the origin, we write the position vector, which is r, goes from the origin to where the object is. And then that r makes an angle theta with the positive x-axis. But when we write the position of our object, we can just write it as the radius, the magnitude of the radius, and then that's in the radial direction. Um, and so here in this picture, we see that um, the two unit vectors that we're going to be using for the polar coordinates, there's one that's in the radial direction, and then there's the other one that's perpendicular to that, and I want you to sort of take note of that because we've seen this before, and I mentioned it earlier that when we use our unit vectors, they are all mutually perpendicular to each other so that we can cover everything. Um, and notice that these two coordinates are perpendicular to each other as well. And so the way that it works is the uh, radial unit vector always goes out away from the origin, and then the theta component is perpendicular to that, and, we, and it's a 90 degree angle counterclockwise from the direction of the radial direction. And so that's how they're always shown in an unambiguous way. All right, so just as we did uh, previously, once we have the radius vector, which is written, or position vector, which is written in this way, if we want to find velocity, we take the derivative of that, and we're going to have to use the product rule. And when we do that, we have a term that is related to the derivative of the radial unit vector with respect to time. And I just want to point out that the whole reason that we do this is because the direction of that unit vector changes. And what we're trying to do is quantify how to express that change in direction. The unit vector, of course, doesn't change its length. By definition, it has a length of 1. But again, we're trying to figure that out, how to express its change in direction. So we start off, um, we just want to know what's the magnitude. So we just want to know like how big it is, and then next we'll look at its direction. So we started off with, here we can write it as delta u sub r, and I'm putting the absolute value signs to remind us that we're only trying to figure out how big it is. And again, I want to just remind you that the sort of relationships that we're using to write this are related to this picture of a circle where this is the arc length subtended by an angle theta, and the radius of the circle is r, and we find that the arc length is equal to the radius times the angle theta.
And so then we come back to this picture, which is, in a sense, it's like that little piece of pie that we see over to the right, but here the arc length is delta, the change in u sub r. And so we can write it as the radius is just the length of the unit vector, u sub r, times delta theta. And so this, of course, is equal to 1, so we can just write this as delta theta. And so, of course, since that's the delta u sub r, it can also represent the, you know, also can be re represent du sub r. And then if we want to find du sub r dt, it's just taking d theta dt equals theta dot. And so that's the magnitude of, I should keep this absolute value sign, of that change in that unit vector. But then we also are trying to figure out, like, what's the direction? And if we look at this picture right here, we notice that the direction of this unit vector is parallel to the direction of u sub theta. So the direction of that change is in the u sub theta direction. So now let's put that all together. Again, our velocity is the derivative of r with respect to t, which we found was going to be equal to r dot u sub r plus r times u r dt, which we just found out what that was. out that that was theta dot and it is in the theta direction. And so when we're looking at this we could say this r dot is the radial component of the velocity and this r times theta dot is the theta component of the velocity. So that if we wrote the velocity as vr u sub r plus v sub theta u sub theta we would say that vr was equal to r dot and v sub theta is equal to theta r theta dot. Okay, so those are the two components of velocity that I can have when I'm talking about polar coordinates and the speed of the particle could be found by taking the Pythagorean theorem and that's how we would find the speed or the magnitude of the velocity. Okay, so now what we've done is we've written the velocity expressed in polar coordinates. So we have this expression. And as you might expect, our next task will be to find the acceleration, which of course is the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. So let's rewrite the velocity so that we know what we're working with. And now we have to take the derivative of that with respect to time. That's going to require us to use a lot of product rules. So we're going to have r double dot times u sub r plus r dot times the derivative of u sub r with respect to time plus r dot theta dot u sub theta plus r theta double dot u sub theta and then finally, r theta du sub theta dt. So you see we had a lot of terms because of the way the velocity worked and because we had to use the product rule. Um, so the, everything is pretty clear except we have two uh, derivatives of unit vectors here, but we already did one of them. Um, and just for memory's sake, we'll remind ourselves that this turned out to be theta dot. 
in the use of beta direction. So we can sort of replace this in here. And then if you want to look at the picture, I wasn't going to go through the derivation because we've done this kind of derivation twice. And up here is the picture that we would use to find out what, how we would express the derivative of u sub theta with respect to time. But you can see it's going it's to be very similar, but we find in terms of its magnitude, it's theta dot again, and its direction is in the minus radial direction. And so we could take that and substitute in here. So let's put that all together because there's a lot of terms going on. We want to we can keep track of it. So we had we're gonna start with our baseline. We have acceleration is equal to r double dot u sub r plus r dot dur dt plus r dot theta dot u sub theta plus r theta double dot u sub theta plus r theta dot du theta dt. Okay, that's what we had for the last time. And we're making the substitutions. d sub ur dt is theta dot u sub theta, and du theta dt is equal to theta dot minus u sub r. Okay, so if we do the substitution, we're going to get acceleration is r double dot u sub r plus r dot theta dot u sub theta plus r dot theta dot u sub theta plus r theta double dot u sub theta minus r theta dot squared u sub r. Okay, so that's kind of messy. It really helps if we collect like terms, like components really. We get our, the radial component is going to look like this. And then our theta component is going to look like this. And so this right here we can view as our radial component of my, our acceleration, and this is our theta component of acceleration. So just for emphasis sake, I'd write I sub r is our double dot minus r theta dot squared, and a theta is equal to r theta double dot plus two r dot theta dot. And this is probably around the time that you're thinking, how in the heck am I going to remember all this? And honestly, I would not expect you to remember these expressions. These are the, definitely the types of things that I would allow you to put on a cheat sheet or an equation sheet. Um, because for one, that's no point you trying to remember them and remember them incorrectly. And also, it doesn't seem like there's a lot to be gained by you trying to derive these expressions every time you need to use them. So, no worries there. All right, so we're all set with that. I'm just going to write it one more time. What we found for our acceleration was that we had a radial term. And we had a tangential term, or a theta term. And so we're there. Now, what if, uh, again, this is not turning out so great, if we had, what if 
position vector is written as r u sub r. What if we allow us to go into three dimensions um, so that we have um, a component of our radius is in the radial direction, but then we also have a z component in the z direction. And so this is as we can as we make the transition from the polar coordinates, which is a two-dimensional situation, to cylindrical coordinates, which is um, three-dimensional. So the idea here is that as we would find the velocity and position for this type of object, um, we've done some of the work before. So for instance, the velocity vector would be found by taking the total time derivative of r sub p with respect to time, which would be d of r u sub r dt plus d of z u sub z dt. But the first term, we already did this. We did it when we were looking at polar coordinates, and nothing's going to change. So we know those expressions. Um, it's This term is the new one. So let's take a look at that. What is the derivative of z u sub z with respect to time? Okay, so we're going to do the... the uh, product rule. Now, I want to remind you that when we were looking at the derivative of these unit vectors, the whole reason that we had to find them was because their direction changed as the particle was moving. They don't change their length because they're unit vectors. They have a unit length of 1. But it turns out that when you're in cylindrical coordinates, your z component or your z unit vector doesn't change direction. So this is actually equal to zero. And so, in a sense, all that we get when we take the derivative is we get this term. So if r sub p is r u sub r plus z u sub z in cylindrical coordinates, the velocity is going to look a lot like what it did in polar coordinates, but we're just going to add one more term for the z component of the velocity. And the same thing is going to be true for the acceleration expression. These two terms are going to be exactly as they were for polar coordinates. And then we just add the z component of the acceleration. So going from uh, polar to cylindrical is really pretty straightforward. And now we're going to look at two problems, um, one of which I'm going to do half of it, and then the other one I'm just going to talk about how you might do it. And that's something that we'll look at together when, um, when we meet to talk about the material. So basically here we're told about a radar gun and it's located at the origin. It's rotating with the angular velocity that we're given of 0.1 radians per second. 
also has an angular acceleration of 0.025 radians per second squared. And then we're told that when theta is 45, um, that we know um, the radius of the road at that instant is 200 meters, and we're asked to find the magnitudes of the velocity and the acceleration of the car. Now, if you haven't guessed yet, this situation is best expressed in polar coordinates. It's really only two-dimensional, so we don't have to bother ourselves with a z component. And so if we look at the velocity, in a sense, we just sort of look for the values or else see if we have to calculate the individual terms like here and this term and this term in order to find the velocity. Now, we're told that at the instant that we're looking at that the radius is 200 meters, and that seems to be, that's a constant value. So r dot, which is the time derivative of r, is just zero. So that piece of the velocity is zero. And then here we use r as 200, and theta dot we're told is 0.1, and so that is the theta component of the velocity. And so the velocity can be just written as 20 u sub theta. So the magnitude of the velocity is just going to be 20 meters per second. And it's all going to be in the theta component, which we could also think of as tangential. Now, um, if we wanted to do the acceleration, we could use these expressions for acceleration in polar coordinates. And what I want you to do is see if you can figure out what to substitute in for these individual terms so that you could find eventually the magnitude of the acceleration of this car. And that's something that we'll come back and look at later. And then finally, this problem is a little bit different. So we can see that, again, our font is not working well. So here, let's just write down what we know. Basically, we're told that the angle theta is given to us as a function of time. It's 4t to the 3 halves. And the radius position is given as 0.1 t cubed. And that's expressed in meters. And you're asked to find the velocity and the acceleration of a ball when t equals 1.5 seconds. And so you're going to use the expressions for theta and r to find theta dot, r dot, theta double dot, r double dot, and then substitute them into the expressions for velocity and acceleration in order to answer your question. Of course, the t value you're using is 1.5 seconds. So that's another thing that we'll come back and look at. All right, and so that finishes up the material for Chapter 12, our first crack at dynamics and kinematics. Um, and so we will be meeting to talk about some of the problems and any questions you have um, probably at the end of the week.